So am I the asshole for asking my wife to please stop flashing her breasts to people? My 32 male wife, 30 female, and I have been together for 11 years, married for just over five years. Ever since I met her in college, she's been insecure about her appearance, specifically her body. When we got our first jobs out of college and became financially stable, she approached me about how I felt about her getting a boob job. To be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of the idea. I told her that I loved her how she is and that I don't think she needed one. Also just personal preference, but I've never really liked fake boobs. I just think they look oddly perky and not natural. And I've dated women in the past with varying chest sizes and would per <laughs> and would prefer women with small to no tits compared to someone none. with fake boobs. All right. I'm okay with that's small, a, but that's a none? Take. Yeah, none is crazy. <laughs> Eight cup? They've always looked... <laughs> They've always looked bolted on to me, but knowing. Wait, wait. Whoa. Did you say bolted? <laughs> bolted, bolted as in like bolted. installed? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like NASCAR. No, nah, he crazy. But... <laughs> but knowing how much it bothered her, I told her that I would support her decision either way. Mm. After thinking about it for a while, she approached me again to say that if I was still serious with my answer, that I would support her either way, that she was going to proceed with the operation as it's been something that has affected her self-esteem for a long time. I wasn't sure how to feel about it at first. I thought about talking her out of it, but I wanted to stand to my original answer and support her either way. In 2021, after COVID settled down and elective procedures were taking place again, she went and got a boob job. I will say her surgeon was fantastic and things did end up looking very good considering my prior opinion. The problem that I've had is ever since she's gotten her boob job, it's definitely emboldened her to put them on display, so to speak. She went from wearing baggy and unrevealing clothing to very tight and revealing shirts with a lot of cleavage. I've dated bigger chested women in the past, so I was pretty used to this. It's just... It just threw me off in the beginning. One thing I'm not adjusting too well, though, is her willingness to show people her bare breasts. <laughs> it's not a secret to anyone that has known her for a long time that she got a boob job. At first, it was mostly her showing her girlfriends, which was still weird to me, but it didn't really cross a boundary for me. That, okay. Okay. <laughs> However, it's almost as if the more and more she's shown them off, the more she's gotten validation and the more enabled she is to continue doing it. The first time it crossed a boundary for me was when we were at a friend's house for dinner and drinks and mm. she had a little too much to drink and showed her girlfriend her breasts while her girlfriend's husband was standing right there. We fought in the car about it on the way home and the next morning I tried to set boundaries with her but she dismissed it and shook it off like I was being controlling. Most recently we were at a friend's house with many other mutual friends watching a football game and she got drunk again. Upon our team scoring in a walk-off fashion, she lifted her shirt and flashed her breasts at the entire party while jumping up and down in celebration. She's not even into football and hardly understands who to cheer for. To me, it was just an excuse to show off her breasts to everyone without their consent, might I add. I was livid and it I just like, this my <laughs> He's like, man, I have, there's no problem with that. I was livid and again, we fought about it. She got defensive and turned it around on me, saying that for once in her life, she's happy with how she looks and she wants to feel good about herself. I again tried expressing my boundaries, but she completely dismissed them. We have been short with each other for a week since that happened. It may sound ridiculous, but if she can't respect my boundaries and feelings, this could be grounds for divorce. I know that might sound dramatic, but I've expressed that I'm not okay with it, and she's dismissing me constantly. Am I the asshole for insisting that my wife stop showing off her breasts? Would I be the asshole for canceling Christmas? I, 31 female, am tired of planning vacations for my ungrateful husband, 33 male, and his twin. My husband and I have been together for seven years and married for three months. We both work high-stress jobs with high incomes and no children. We're frugal and spend our money on savings and trips. In our relationship, I plan our retirement, keep track of finances, host friends and family, arrange gifts, make appointments, and plan our vacations, and we travel a lot. For his part, he does laundry and cooks and does the dishes more than me. He gets along well with everyone and is the more easygoing one. On our trips, I've asked my husband to help me with task ranging from helping me plan beforehand to finding an Uber. Usually he ignores me until it's too late and I have to make the decision or he makes mistakes like getting an Uber to the wrong place or mm -hmm. forgetting beach towels I asked him to bring. Mistakes aren't a big deal, but he places the blame for them on me. 
The issue is not new to us. For our wedding, I did 99% of the planning, and he promised in return that he would plan a honeymoon. Right before the wedding, he looked up a Costco package that was almost twice as expensive as we agreed to spend, and that didn't have guaranteed spots. What I really wanted him to do was not find an all-inclusive, unaffordable trip that we didn't go on, but do something that was tailored to us. My husband has a twin brother that often comes along with us. Like my husband, his twin doesn't help plan, and he's never thanked me for planning trips for us. He behaves like coming on this trip is a gift to me. Outside of this, I've tried to be his friend, but I feel no reciprocity. I get him gifts for his birthday and holidays, text him and call him and include him, i.e. asking him if he wants me to write his name on a Mother's Day card when he hadn't helped me pick a gift. Right now, we're all on a flight back from Hawaii where I researched hotels and flights, put together schedules, booked hikes and dinners, rented a car, etc. When I brought up the fact that they complained a lot and never said thank you, Ooh. My brother-in-law said that he told me the sunset was nice, and that's the same as a thank you. Beautiful sunset. <laughs> when I told this to my husband and explained how upset I am with both of them for not helping me, not yelling, but definitely not in a calm way, he told me to F myself. My husband also said that if I cancel future trips, that I'm no longer invited to my in-laws Thanksgiving, the one thing his mom plans. I've already planned and booked an elaborate three-week Christmas trip to Italy for the three of us. They say they want to go while doing nothing, but I just feel exhausted at this point. I'm considering canceling entirely, canceling my own portion, or canceling one or both of their portions and going solo. (laughs) Would I be the asshole if I took one of those paths? Okay, am I the asshole for purposely stopping my classmate from winning an award and subsequently making her cry? This issue is honestly making me frustrated. Almost everyone is saying that I'm in the wrong. People are talking behind my back, and I genuinely don't know if what I did was correct or not. I just feel so lost. Please, please do help. I'm 17, suffered a major accident while cycling when I was 13. I have two really deep, long facial scars. I have been bullied really bad because of it. I'm tall, ugly, and intimidating as per most girls. People make fun of other people by saying things like, why don't you just hook up with OP? I'm honestly used to it. Those people don't matter to me anyway. But there's this girl that I've known since middle school. Let's call her Beck, I guess. Sorry, from you? Guinevere. Oh. (laughs) Guinevere. That's crazy. I had a really, really big crush on her till a few days ago. I thought she was genuinely sweet and amazing. My family is incredibly supportive, so they urged me to ask her out. I can play guitar, so I made this whole song for her. I went to the neighboring city to get her favorite chocolate and stuff like that. This was the first time I felt like really going and asking someone out in my life. I felt like regardless of what I do, she'll see me for who I am and at least accept me as a friend. I was over the moon when she ended up accepting. We went to a fancy restaurant, had a fun time together, and walked for 30 minutes. She was really sweet to me. The next week or so was honestly heaven. People started noticing me, and even her friends seemed friendly with me. I honestly cried every day because I felt so fortunate to get so much love. It all broke down when a friend of hers, who was on Instagram and followed Beck, sent screenshots to me. I honestly felt betrayed and disgusted. She had posts saying, fulfilling his lifelong wish by being his valentine, making his day by finally helping him interact with my friends. He is ugly, but beautiful people accept ugly people. Hashtag ugly people matter. (laughs) Beck's friends then explained that she apparently wanted a good social media image and has thus asked all of her friends to be kind to me and tolerate me till the first week of March and then distance themselves from me. No. Yeah. She apparently wanted to win some stupid positive role model award for her college application because she was lagging behind in community service. (laughs) And she thought playing with my feelings for a few days wouldn't hurt. And apparently, since I was ugly, she was the kind one to give me attention anyway. I was in tears and honestly felt disgusted. My blood was boiling. I researched about this award and found a Facebook page about it online. I went to the authorities to confirm if her name was on the nomination list and then had my friends at work and family as an alibi. I don't know what that means, but I think he reported it to the foundation. (laughs) Yeah, as an alibi. What did he do? (laughs) Where where did this... Just go. <laughs> Where's Beck? <laughs> Going to be. Where's Beck at? What did you do to Beck? All I have to say is she wrote a great book. <gasps> she is apparently crying a lot because she received a message from the committee saying her nomination was withdrawn. I'm now even more ostracized in school, but honestly, I have no more remorse whatsoever and feel so much more satisfied. 
Am I the asshole for ditching my assigned bridesmaid at a wedding for one that is younger and a different race as me? Huh? Huh? One of my good friends from college was getting married, call him Tom, to his wife, call her Liz, and ask me to be one of his groomsmen. I was honored. I haven't seen him in a while because I live across the country. When I arrived to a city, I was assigned a bridesmaid. Call her Kelly. Now, Kelly is a lovely woman. However, I think we were both only assigned to each other because we're both black. Liz starts telling me that we are both single and perfect for each other, but there is nothing to indicate that at all besides us being black. I should add as well that Liz has a lot more bridesmaids than Tom has groomsmen. The first night, the entire wedding party went out and it became clear that Kelly wanted to hook up. I was not into her at all, so I kindly turned her down. She then starts interrogating me as to why, and I try to give her a generic reason, but she starts listing off all of the reasons why we're so perfect together. I ended up saying that I don't do the whole short-term type thing, and that we both live in completely different states, so there's no future here. She ends up cooling off, but then tells me that she respects me more for that, and that I'm a stand-up guy, and the type of guy that she's looking for. So it attracted her more? <laughs> what? <laughs> Yes. You told me you didn't like me. That's that hot. makes That's me hot. want you. That's hot. <laughs> That's hot. I'm a glutton for rejection. <laughs> During the rest of the time we were there, one of the unmatched bridesmaids, call her Jen, starts messaging me privately and we hit it off. The next day, the wedding ceremony goes well. We have the reception and me and Kelly do our entrance together and then dance together for a bit. And after a while, I go to the bar and Jen and I start to dance. And at this point, Kelly is giving me dirty looks. Oh. I just Kelly, <laughs> girl, come on now. Stand up. Stand <laughs> up on your feet. I just ignore it and continue having a good time. All is going well until when I'm at the bar, Kelly and Liz confront me and start saying that me dancing with Jen is inappropriate. They start saying that she's too young for me and that it looks creepy. For your information, I am 32 and she's 24, about to turn 25. Uh, I'm like, oh, it's okay. Me and Jen are just friends. Liz at this point is angry with me and starts saying that Jen is in college, she's doing her master's, and that this is her wedding and she doesn't want to see that. And then what? Kelly starts saying that I must have a fetish for white women. At this point, I realize that there is no logical argument here that I can make. I tell Kelly and Liz that I really enjoyed the wedding, but that I need to go to bed early for my flight the next day. I the leave. use of the word fetish was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. Wait a minute. I leave and go up to my hotel. 15 minutes later, Jen leaves early. Five minutes after Jen came up, we both get kicked out of the wedding party chat. I later find out from Tom that Kelly was crying her eyes out and that it messed up the night for Liz as well. He told me that he isn't mad at me because he told Liz from the start that Kelly isn't going to be my type, but instead Liz really wanted to set Kelly up. At this point, I feel terrible that I made it so Liz was not able to enjoy her night. As for Kelly, I just wish she got that no means no. Am I the asshole?